to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on Forgotten Feminists. My name is Yasmin Mohammed, and I have these conversations with women who I find to be inspiring, women who I think would be very motivating for other women to um, find their freedom, to find their happiness. And today I have invited an incredibly lovely woman who I have known for many years. Her name is Jayla Tavakoli. Jayla is from Iran originally, but she is living in Denmark now where she's been an activist for many years. You'll find Jayla in Ayan Hersiali's latest book, Pray, um, where she was interviewed. And Jayla has it's also been involved in making films. She's been involved in um, so much activism. In fact, some of that activism towards free expression has gotten her in some very difficult situations and she'll tell us about that now. Um, Jayla, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're one of my heroes. I, I just uh, wanted to tell you, you, I think you're doing such a great job. Um, and I'm so happy that, that uh, we can work together. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Um, Jayla and I hung out in LA a few years back and it was so fun. And we, we just absolutely loved each other's company. There's something about women who have been through hardship um, who are now reclaiming their strength and reclaiming their freedom. It's really, to me, the most beautiful example of humanity. And when I find women like you, I just, I get, I gravitate towards you. I gravitate towards that, that positive energy. Um, but let's talk about, let's take it back. I know you said you don't like to talk about uh, yourself too much, but that's all you're going to do for the next hour and a half. <laughs> um, so let's take it back to, you know, now everybody's talking about the Islamic Republic in or the Islamic regime in Iran. People are starting to become more familiar with it, but it's still, I think, um, unknown for a lot of people. They're very shocked to hear that women aren't allowed to ride bicycles. Women aren't allowed to, their, you know, their voices, they're not allowed to sing. They're not, this, everything is not allowed. Um, so talk to me about being a child in Iran, growing up in Iran. And, and as you're answering me, I'm going to switch over and, and show everybody a, a picture of you as a child. And, and you can talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I, I was born in Iran after the revolution in Iran. Uh, I was born in uh, 82 and the revolution was in 79. Uh, my, my dad went underground because he was a communist and, and uh, you know, his life was threatened. Um, his friends were killed. And so he fled Iran eventually. And, um, and yeah, we, we, me and my mom and my brother, we stayed in Iran. Uh, he fled, and and I yeah I was there until um, I was nine years old, and this is the, the last year uh, from my stay in Iran, uh, from my childhood in Iran. Um, at, at the age of nine, you become a woman in Islam, and then uh, you have this beautiful <laughs> a party where you uh, learn to you know do namaz and 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 learn about the religion, and then. Uh, really what it means is that you can get married and also have intercourse with your husband really that's what event you know you know it's crazy to say but it's it's what it's about and um yeah it uh, we we were just forced into it nobody asked us whether we wanted to do this this was just a part of your school um um you know what what you had to go through um and I, I remember I, I was thinking I should cover my hair as good as possible because there were teachers, you can see in the, in the picture actually, there are teachers telling people, telling the other girls that to, you know, just a piece of hair, if, if it's out, you know, you have to cover, up, cover it up. And it, it's even, if, it's just, it's a closed school and it's only the parents, I think maybe only the moms are allowed because it's a girls' school. Um, and even so, you have you had to cover up and pray, and you know, uh, yeah, it 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 was a crazy time growing up in Iran because the culture uh, cultural revolution, as they call it themselves, they were 
trying to brainwash us all. Um, and and I knew, of course, the regime was bad because my my father was not living with us because he fled. So I knew there was something totally wrong with this regime. Um, so I went along, and I remember once there came this lady with a chador to the school, and she was she didn't she didn't belong to the school. She came and asked everybody what their religion was, and I was so mm-hmm. confused. I didn't know what my religion was. So I just asked a random teacher that I thought I made my trust. But it's my religion. I don't know what my religion is. And she said, have you heard anything else? If you haven't, you're a Shia. (laughs) And then I said, yes, I'm a Shia. (laughs) That's the default in Iran. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. If if you're not uh, told anything else, you're a Shia. So I just, you know, I pretended to be a Muslim. And I, I, we, we, um, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we were just trying. We, I think we had the the Quran from from you know from even the you know the grade the kindergarten grade before you start school you had we had Quran I think where we started learning Arabic words and and stuff like that wow. um wow wow that's really interesting to me be, on so many different levels first of all you're not Muslim but you're wearing hijab you're learning about Quran and then not only that you're learning the language of the people who invaded your country and uh you know yeah. gave made you made your religion islam it's it's very mm-hmm. um it, it's interesting because in this day and age where we always talk about colonizers and erasing people's culture and erasing people's history i know iranians yeah. have done an amazing job of retaining their persian culture yeah despite you being yeah not even muslim but you're gonna wear hijab you're going to learn Quran, you're going to say that you're Muslim when they come and they ask you, because yeah. it's, it's how you stay alive. Yeah. And, and I remember everybody being against, the, not everybody, but I, I mean, a lot of people are against, even at the beginning of the revolution, people, you know, from my childhood, I remember people saying, and we, we hate the Mullahs, but it was always like, people would get so scared of, of yeah. talk like that. And then it would be like, just in the you know in the bus it just somebody would say something and everybody would like agree but just you know everybody was Definitely. afraid of it so they would just walk away from the conversation and but it's it's amazing that they haven't really uh, it they haven't been able to brainwash you know people as much as they should have been because yeah. i think because of the persian culture and the fact that we have had so much culture before islam um, and we're proud of that culture as well, and and um, and I I think just the common sense, just the you know humanity, really, just believing in in the fact that it's you're not a whore for taking off your hijab, right? Uh, this is what what is told. You are um, you are a bad woman. You are you are a whore almost if you're showing your body your hair or anything like that and and this has this is just the cult it's just been rejected culturally in iran and it's it's so nice to see that you know for every generation if there's just an, a bigger um resistance against the regime in iran and uh, all iranians we are so emotional these days because it you don't understand how people can go to to protest a regime just risking their lives every time they go and children go right we have had so many children die in this you don't understand it but at the same time if you don't have a life you know mm-hmm. you, as a especially as a woman you're not even seen as a human being right you don't have the same rights legally um, you know according to sharia law you don't have the same rights uh, your blood money is the same as a man's uh, one tes- testicle, or you know, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're just not worth anything in Iran if you're a woman, and if you have a family that takes care of you and watches over you, of course you have a better chance of having a good life. But if you're born into a family that does not, then you know you really don't have um, a choice but to be against this regime and and protest this regime and I it's just amazing to see people going on going going and it's very it's very sometimes I just want them to stay at home because I want Mm. them to be safe so I I it's 
it's I have this bubble. <laughs> I am glad that they're protesting, but at the same time, I'm like, you you cannot buy. There are so many beautiful young children and and young people who are dying and older people as well. And I don't want anybody to, to die, but at the same time, you know, they have agency as Masiali Nejad says, you know, we, you have to understand that this is their life. I'm not living there. I, I don't have the same, I, I have a freedom here. So maybe if I was there, I would do the same. I would risk my life. Uh, but it's just so beautiful and so scary. So, so it's, yeah. Well, that's what I uh, want to talk to you about, actually. I'm, I'm interested in, so you escaped from Iran when you were very young. You came to your father and, and you were able to, to live a free life in Europe. Um, you know, you left this world behind a long time ago. You could have just moved forward and not looked back, but you didn't. You know, you, you risk your life even here in the West, obviously, that you know, it's all on a scale. The risks are not the same. We don't have IRGC waiting to shoot yeah. protesters in the in the yeah. streets. But you know, when you were involved in activism, you're also taking a risk. What made you do that? Why why did you decide that you were going to risk your life? fighting for free expression and for women and, and all of these things? Um, I, 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 was, I uh, survived the terrorist attack in 2015. And after that, I was like, I knew there was, you know, risks involved in what I was doing, you know. Uh, but after that, I was like, do I even continue? Because normal things, they were like, you have said it before many times, they were discussing whether it was appropriate for us to, you know, criticize Islam or it was provocative of us to, you know, um, show drawings of uh, uh, Islam's prophet and so on. I was like, if you don't understand this, and I'm, I'm doing all of this, and the Danes don't even understand, you know, what is happening, and they're not even ready to fight for their own freedom. Why am exactly. I risking my life, right? But at the same time, I came to the conclusion that I would either be, you know, <laughs> be a little scared sometimes, or I would be depressed all the time. So <laughs> that was the, you know, that was the decision. Do you want to be depressed and be very angry and bitter, <laughs> or do you want to be scared, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because it's scary. Of course, it's scary that, uh, you know, you get desperate and you, I, I have, you know, I am not in hiding, but I'm like... I have my address is, you know, secret and I have a lot of different things that I uh, have to protect myself um, and my family. And, and this is, of course, you don't want to live like this, but at the same time, there is no choice for me. I can't, I can't accept it. I can't stay quiet. Um, and I don't understand why people do stay quiet, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's why I don't understand. And I didn't flee Iran because my my dad fled Iran. My mom and my uh, brother and me we got um, we got uh, we got brought to Denmark uh, as not as refugees but as um, what do you call it as immigrants. Spring. Yeah, as immigrants. So we were uh, we were allowed to go back to Iran and visit, and I did so. And I wrote my uh, thesis in in um, in college in university um, about Iran. Um, so we went back and and going back and I, I wrote this thesis about activists for freedom like different kinds of women's freedom uh, students activists and and workers activists i used to be a socialist so, mm -hmm. uh, so well, your dad's so, a communist so i kind yeah, of exactly. i I'm assumed not a socialist anymore but yeah yeah but, but yeah but, but i i was at the time and i when i just their stories were so brave um and I decided I have to be their voice because I have the freedom here in Denmark, and I can't, I, you know, Iran is a big part of me because the whole, the horse, the whole story of my life. The reason why I'm in the West is because of what happened in Iran. So I can't, you know, I have a responsibility, I think, uh, to to do something about what's going on in Iran, uh, as much as it's possible um, for me to to do something about what is 
her. And at the same time, you, I saw the same, you know, it's not, it's of course not the same what's happening in the West, but just the fact that Islamists are growing in numbers, they're, mm-hmm. um, people are afraid of them. People. I mean, Iran wasn't like, it, everything is step by step. Yeah. This is the thing, you know, yeah. that it's, yeah. it's the frog boiling. It's bit by bit. Yeah. You have to and be I, careful from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. And um, not just this year, when I tell people, like, like people who are not in the, you know, in the, who are not journalists or who are not activists, just normal people, when I tell them, they ask me, "What are you doing? What, 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 what do you work with?" And I say, "Oh, I'm, I'm an author and I'm an, a commentator and." And I work with Islam, I criticize Islam. They say, oh, you have to be careful. I don't want you, you know, I don't want you dead or I don't want you. And I'm like, you cannot accept this. You cannot just say, don't be a critic of Islam because <laughs> then you will end up dead. It's, it's, it's normal Danish people who say things like that. And I'm like, no, you cannot. <laughs> this is not going to be our future here in the West as well. It has to stop. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so hearing you talk, I'm I'm struck by how, you know, very obvious it is to me that if you were in Iran, you would definitely be one of these protesters that are out on the street I because I probably. you would be yeah. you're, because you were also the people there are being faced with the same thing. Do you want to yeah. be depressed and angry and demoralized and dehumanized for the rest of your life? Yeah. Or do you want to, you know, push past your fear and maybe things can be better for you or for yeah. your people, for your country, yeah. for your children, take that risk, you know? And yeah. I really felt what you said, you know, in my heart, when you talked about the, just being compelled to do this, feeling like it's your responsibility. Like we have to talk when you're surrounded by people who say things to you, like these Danish people are saying to you, like, don't, don't talk. You're going to get yourself killed. Just stay quiet. You know, yeah. we know where that leads. We know what happens when yeah. everybody yeah. in the society is too scared to open their mouth and everybody yeah. in the society just bends over and, and capitulates and, you know, and panders. They're yeah. just going to walk all over you. We saw it happen. Obviously, we're seeing it happen in Iran. We've seen it happen in Egypt. We've seen it happen, in, you know, in Syria, in Lebanon, in you know, all over the world. All the time, we're watching this happen. It's happening right now in Indonesia. It's happening in Malaysia. People get so scared, and that fear controls them, and it allows yeah. them to accept their own subjugation, and it. it, it you know, it's really funny. Um, in Egypt, the the president in like the fifties, Nasser, has a video where he was talking about how the Muslim mm-hmm. Brotherhood, who are Islamists, just like your uh, Islamic regime in in Iran, how they were trying to encourage him to get all the women in Egypt to wear hijab, and he starts laughing, and all the men in the parliament start laughing. What a joke. Imagine trying to tell our wives and our and our daughters what to wear. And yeah. you know, fast forward to today and see the the state that Egypt is in, right? It's it's people yeah. don't realize, people don't understand like you see the pictures all the time. Iran before the Islamic regime and Iran now. You know, we we can see yeah. how quickly, Even how Afghanistan drastically. Or, yeah. And Even that's Afghanistan, fear. Libya, Yemen, yes, Afghanistan, everywhere. exactly. Yeah. Shocking it's, to, to yeah. believe that the Afghanistan used to be like that. But fear, when you have guns and bullets and you threaten people and you threaten their children, then they will do what needs to be done. Yeah. And that same kind of fear is happening here in the West, not just with the terrorist yeah. attacks, yeah. but with the word Islamophobia, bigot, yeah. xenophobe, yeah. racist. That's fear that forces people to be quiet and to not criticize. Yeah. 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 So tell me Either about the. Afraid, yeah. Either they're afraid of violence, and or they're afraid of being called racist or Islamophobes, right? Um, yeah. And it's and it's not going to help anyone. It's it's going to get more. You know, we, the Islam is in number are rising, and it's and even if. Uh, I mean, the only hope I see these years is people like you and people like, you know, other ex-Muslims, 
coming forward and telling their stories and and saying no 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 hijab is uh, not uh, uh, you know it's not it cannot be a, a feminist symbol it, it cannot be a freeing symbol it it's it's um, it's it's discriminatory towards women it's 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 nothing we can use in this day and age to say oh you're free you you chose your hijab then you're a free woman no you chose mm. to 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 use a discriminatory uh, veil again you know to say i ha- i'm a woman therefore i should be covered that's not feminism it's it's mm. opposite and it's if we didn't have people like you <laughs> you know i would be so depressed i wouldn't even know where what to do or where to go (laughs) well honestly the women in iran they are the ones that are sending that message to the world in a way that they can't ignore they are so loud they are so clear they are so pure in their message taking this hijab burning it in the streets in front of the irgc like it just it makes like you said, you're filled with simultaneously, you're filled with so much pride and also you're filled with so much fear, just terrified for these women. There's women that are, the videos of them are still being shared today. You know, like the woman who was tying her hair up and she tightened it. People don't realize that she was killed. You know, she was shot. What was six or eight times? Like the brutality of these people yeah. is just it, inconceivable. It. Yeah. It's too and children in 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 a high school, young girls, yeah. same thing. They just recently um were terrorizing young girls as well who were trying to protest and killing them. Yeah. Like it's it's yeah. and despite all of this, you know, these women are coming forward very, very loud, very, very clear. Yeah. To the, the nobody can ignore them anymore. The international, yeah. you know, media politicians, they have to finally pay attention. Yeah. Even in Denmark, because the social social democracy in Denmark, I think they're thinking about um making it illegal for small girls to wear hijab in, yes. in school in Denmark. Mm-hmm. And they're not even they're not even uh, you know courageous enough to say that's what we want. They're you know discussing it a, a little, but I know they're for it, but they're again, you know, they're afraid of being called racist, so they're not saying. It. So, and now there's elections in Denmark, and the, the prime minister, um, before she, you know, said now we are going to begin the election process, she said the women in Iran, um, they're burning their hijab in the streets, and here in Denmark, we're not even, you know, really uh, ready to talk about the hijab on little girls. Mm. And I was like. Oh, she's using the women in Iran to, mm-hmm. you know, to to start this discussion about uh, girls, uh, small girls in schools, you know, in in elementary schools, um, wearing the hijab. And I'm like, we're in, we're in, we live in this freedom. Why aren't mm-hmm. we, uh, you know, why do why do you have to use the Iranian women to, you know, it's just it's it's weird. Mm-hmm. We should be able to say no we are against this it's Mm -hmm. we don't want this for children in Denmark it's not it's not okay to sexualize small children and say oh you have to wear hijab because you was you you were born with a vagina instead of you know exactly and you know we um it's it's amazing to me that we we are not even ready to discuss whether and as as you have always also you know discussed before that in campaign in in you know in both the political system but also you know municipalities the state they use hijabis all the time in their you know campaigns yeah uh, and commercials everywhere and it's like why should we be rep- you know what, they want me to be included you know feel included in the society but i don't mm. feel included when you use a hijabi you know and at the same time you're we have so many young muslim women and children even coming to their schools and social workers and saying i need help because i'm being mm-hmm. forced to this i can't go do this i can't go there i can't even you know participate in my school um you know 
the, the you know the the trips that we go on I cannot yep. go I I cannot I cannot have you know I cannot participate in swimming I cannot change in front of everybody else after gym class I cannot have a boyfriend I cannot go to parties all all, all of this is a big problem in Denmark as it is in many other Western countries mm-hmm. with Muslim you know especially women and girls and at the same time we're not ready to say oh we're fi- we're fighting with the- these women and children not with the mullahs and the hijabis they're not going to represent us um and and the ones we want to help and you know support being free um so it's just sometimes it's it's very we're very hard <laughs> yes. to continue yeah yeah no i i i completely agree and I feel every single word that you said and it reminds me of how when I was in school in Canada you you have to do physical education sex ed you know all sorts of courses in order to graduate but all they needed is my mother to walk in with a hijab into the school and say nope my daughter is not going to take these courses and they're like okay yes ma'am uh-huh no problem and they just capitulate you know the answer should be no This is the rule for all Canadian children. Your daughter is a Canadian child. This is the way it is. And I would have appreciated that because I wanted to go to these classes. And you were talking about the field trips and the just, you know, all of the fun things, music class, all of these things were taken away from me and my country didn't stand up for me. And yeah. And then, of course, you know, in my book, I detail it even more so how they didn't even stand up for me when I was um, complaining to them about the abuse. But they will just turn a blind eye if it's Muslims, if it has something to do with Islam, then they just immediately bow down. And and it's incredibly frustrating. Um, Tell me about your book, Public Secrets of Islam. Is it, uh, I know it's not available in English, unfortunately, so I couldn't read it yet. I have to brush up on my Danish. (laughs) <laughs> um but give give us a give us an idea of, of what it's what it's about yeah i i wrote the book after i survived the terrorist attack and i was like if i have can to you tell us about book, that actually yeah. tell us about the terrorist attack yeah. first. um i uh i was a socialist and then when i um because of because of islam and the integration debate and you know and iran and and what I, you know, what I knew about Islam and what I knew about Iran and and the integration stuff. So my party became more and more um, hostile towards my 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 comments in the press. And they actually also said at one time I should apologize to Muslims. And I was like, Wow. Yeah, actually, I I went to a SMS meeting. There was this person who was getting millions and millions of kroners to to do integration work in in Copenhagen I at that time I was uh, elected for the uh, municipality for the 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 leftist party I was a part of in assistance it's the most leftist party in Denmark Uh, and and uh, and uh, and and I, I just went to this conference that he had held you know and he was he was getting money from the municipality, and at the same time, he was kind of working for for an Islamist organization, and kind mm-hmm. of, you know, he he was using the municipality, uh, you know, you know the the, the, the diversity, of, inclusion, yeah. multiculturalism. Yeah, yeah. When in reality, was, yeah. it's terrorism, Islamism, violence. Yeah, yeah. Misogyny. You probably know Khaled, Khaled Abu Yasin from you. You probably he's a very okay, he's a very crazy Salafi Islamist mm. from the U.S. and he's like mm. he has the, he has talked about Osama being his brother and you know like he's he's very controversial. He's he's oh very, I think I know which guy you're talking about. Yes, he's he's uh, Afro American I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he had, he was invited to Copenhagen by this Islamist who got money from the municipality. So I was like, why are we giving money to this person who is inviting this psycho um, mm-hmm. to to Copenhagen? And I went to the conference and I sat beside my husband and, and they said, no, you have to sit with your sisters. You cannot sit with the men. 
So I was like, no, I'm not wow. moving. And, and, and I was a member of the municipality and I was invited as such, right? By the person who was held, uh, you know, having this conference. And then people, you know, these Salafis came and threatened me and then we had to walk out and call the police. The police wouldn't do anything about the fact that, you know, they had, you know, discriminatory laws inside of the meeting, which is not allowed in Denmark. Um, yet they said, we have to just take you away from here. So uh, the police car just drove us away from the meeting and I went to the press and the Next week, my my uh, my party wanted me to apologize to Muslims because I had. How you know, dare had... you not subjugate yourself? Yeah. How dare you not engage in gender apartheid? Don't yeah. you know your place, woman? Get in yeah. the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was in the back. It was like parallel to the men, but still, I you know it, it was separate. Still, yeah, it's it was the separate. segregation. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, I'm not sitting beside people I don't know. I want and my husband and at my other side there was this boy he wasn't even a man you know but we just got so uh, many threats um and it was in a place in Copenhagen that is very with you know there are a lot of immigrants and a lot of Muslims there the next day I was giving an interview to the press and the cameraman told me if somebody is going to attack me from the from behind can you just give me a sign or something say something and I was like what he said, yeah, we, we are not safe in this, uh, you know, neighborhood. So if somebody is going to, I was like, what is happening? And nobody was talking about it, not even the cameraman. So people are, you know, the, the fear is so real. Um, and within Iranians also, even in Denmark, the fear is so real also because they, of course, come and demonstrate, but they're, they're afraid, uh, you know, in in normal circumstances, they don't really like what, what I'm writing on Facebook or other people are writing critical of the regime or uh, of Islam, uh, especially Islam, is, is still a very controversial, controversial within the Iranians because they're saying, oh, this is not against Islam. Oh, really? They're burning <laughs> their hijab. They're saying, we don't want your Islamic Republic. We don't want you mullahs there. It's not about Islam, not at all. You know, they go on TV saying these things. And I'm like, what are you doing? You have all the freedom in the West to say what this is actually about. And if you don't know what it's about, you shouldn't go on TV trying to be their voice. Because, of course, this is about Islam. They have been, they have been oppressed 43 years with Islam, Islamic laws, with Sharia laws. You know, the, the men who touch women, you know, the, the policemen who touch women, they're, they're not allowed to touch women. The reason why they're allowed is because it's jihad. They're mm. hitting the women. It's a part of the jihad against, you know, against these women. And that is why their, their religion suddenly allows them to touch women. It's because they're hitting them, um, you know. So everything in Iran is, you know, are, you know you, they have arguments for everything uh, from, you know, Islamic theology. And this is what my book is about is saying you know islamic theology and and uh, mainstream islam it doesn't matter if it's sunni or shia and other you know the schools within those two main schools of thought in in islam it's it's literal islam it's it's uh, you know if you say the quran is god is god's word then you have a lot of problems because then you know you're you're legitimizing children being married, you're legitimizing having slaves, sex slaves, you're legitimizing jihad. And if and unfortunately even, you know, reform reformers within Islam are being, you know, killed and oppressed and um, even in even in the West. Um, and it's it's uh, I think it's time to talk about this theology and not be afraid of um because we have to have muslims you know uh, a lot of muslims in the west they don't want they don't know about the theology and they don't want actually they don't want to know anything about the theology because it's so bad <laughs> that they don't want to know because if they know then they have to you know leave islam or do something mm -hmm. about it and they, they don't have to, they don't have the energy to do so mm -hmm. so they don't 
they just don't want to know. Um, that's why most of the time they say you have to talk to my mom about this. I can't, I can't tell you what I think about this. I don't want to have an opinion about this. And even some of the imams in Denmark, we have this Danish convert, converted imam. He says, I don't like stoning. Personally. I don't stone. I, okay. Yeah, I don't like stoning personally. The fact that you have to, it's a punishment within Islam, but it's it's a, you know it's a package deal in Islam, mm-hmm. and I can't really say I, I I'm not for it. Um, it's um, but personally I don't like it. Mm. But this personally has to become theology if, if Islam has you know in in the future has to have a place in in the West at least. This yeah. personally has to become theology. It it cannot just be oh I personally don't like it, but it's just a part of the theology anyway. Uh, that is the, yeah. yeah, that's what the book is about. Trying to explain this <laughs> with examples mm. from Iran and and also Sunni Islam and yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a really fascinating book, and I I hope to get my hands on an English translation. Um, I will work on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, obviously, I have a lot of meaning to do it. Yeah, 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 and it would re- reach a greater audience, where which I think it really does yeah. need to be read, and it's going to resonate with a lot of people. I mean, yeah. as you're talking here, like my neck is just it can't stop nodding. I'm just like oh. every <laughs> single word that you're saying. Um, and I remember saying that and feeling that myself when I was a Muslim, like. Yeah, I don't like that the prophet married a six year old. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't like female genital mutilation. Yeah, I don't like uh, wearing the hijab. I don't like niqab. I don't like stoning. I don't like cutting off people's limbs when they steal. I don't like this, 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 this. But do you think you have an option? There's no option. My mom yeah. threatened to kill me when I just took off the hijab because I said, this is the one thing, it's my body. I can control this, you know, and I don't want to just, this is the one part that I don't want to be engaged in. I don't want to partake in, you know, I'm still a Muslim, but I just don't want to wear a hijab anymore. And that was enough for me to be threatened with death because like this imam said, it's a package deal. It's black or white. You take it or leave it. You follow everything or you are a a non-believer and therefore you should be killed you know yeah and it's there's no gray area there's no middle ground there's no room for discussion there's no room for growth or discourse now there's a lot of like you mentioned muslim reformers these days that are trying their best to do great work with bringing their their religion to the century you know um but you're always going to be up against the scripture you know like women in egypt when they were trying to make uh, domestic violence criminalized well, how are you going to criminalize something if the Quran chapter four, verse 34 instructs men to beat their wives? Yeah. If Allah already sanctioned it, instructed them, in fact, how is a human going to be able after that to override the laws of Allah? You know, they have a big, big job ahead of them. Um, all the power to them. Obviously, I I uh, support anybody who's trying to progress yeah. their, their culture uh, or their religion. But, but what a mess, it, you know, there's so it, yeah. much in that religion. People ask me, isn't it maybe, you know, unrealistic for Islam to be reformed? Maybe it is. I don't know. But if you have, you want to reform it, you have to have a, a theological alternative. You know, you cannot just say that you're a modern Muslim and I just want to be a modern Muslim and because that there are a lot of modern Muslims who are secular, who are not, you know, who don't wear hijab, who live normal lives, who drink alcohol or don't, or, you know, there are many versions of a Muslim. But Islam is still mainstream. Islam is still literal Islam. It's still stoning, cutting off hands and feet and executing homosexuals, executing yes. um, non-believers, you know, infidels, uh, you know, ex-Muslims, anybody who is against or criticizing um, Islam who doesn't want to, you know, convert or, you know, live by Sharia law. Um, so you have you have to have an 
alternative as a as a reformist. And this is, of course, hard to do because it's the same. You will have the same. You will have the same um, criticism. Your your even as if, if if you as a Muslim don't believe in one verse of the Quran, you're a non-believer. So mm-hmm. you know according to the mainstream islamists mm-hmm. you know according to islamists if you don't believe in one verse of the quran or even if you have doubt in one verse you're an unbeliever so yep. it's so hard to to they become they become infidels they become non-believers they become ex-muslims and even if they're muslims and they just want to reform islam they they get the same death threats as you and me right exactly so even in the even in the West. So that's why if you're not really, you know, if you're not ready to risk your life for a reformist Islam, then it's not going to happen. And and I think it's it's hard, for instance, Majid Nawaz has for many years, you know, talked about reformist Islam, but I haven't really, I what I need to see is a, an alternative theologically. And this is, of course, some have, presented and there are also in, within Iranians there are like some Sufi groups who are you know reformists but it's it's not really clear the, the theology behind it or we don't know because it's you know they don't want to risk their lives they just exactly want to it's scary business um, it's uh they're, it's they're taking their life in their yeah. hands to try and yeah give a new yeah. theology like uh yeah whoever tries to do that is knows that they're risking their life um but we kind of got off a topic a little bit and you didn't tell us about the terrorist attack yeah the terrorist attack was because i yeah it's true (laughs) um (laughs) it's because after i um and then i left my uh, the leftist party and i became an independent in the municipality of Copenhagen. the three last years i was an independent and then in those years, I uh, we started a committee for Lars Vilk, who is who was what he just died last year, in um in an accident, um in a car accident in Sweden. He's, he's he was a Swedish artist who, in solidarity with the Danish um car- cartoonist who got death threats, he he draw Muhammad as a dog, uh, a roundabout dog because. There's something with roundabout in Sweden. They always have this thing, you know, this art uh, in the roundabout. So he he drew uh, Muhammad as a uh, roundabout uh, dog, and he was of course um, the same as the Danish cartoonist. He was threatened, and he lived with security guards, you know, for for the rest of his life. And and when we were, went to the funeral, even it was like you know just just his funeral was this security big security event um it was of course only for people who were invited and um it's it's just so horrific but we he we had um we had many debates in in Denmark with him um and it's also because in Sweden people were so politically correct so he was like he didn't have anyone supporting him, so we wanted to support him. You know, have have a committee for him in Denmark. So we had a lot of meetings, and you know, people came and discussed with him. Also, Muslims came and discussed with him, and he would say, "Of course, I have also. You know, I I don't mind drawing Jesus as as something." Or there were a lot of you know examples of criticism of religion through cartoons and um, and, and art. Uh, criticizing religion or even ridiculing religion jesus in a glass of kiss and and, you know a lot of things uh, like that um to just just to show that he's not a racist this is just this is just uh, criticism anti-religion he just doesn't like religion yeah 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 and he's an artist he's his his job is to pro to be provocative right Mm -hmm. um so one of these events it was just after the Charlie Hebdo event and we called the police and I said, this is, I mean, this is, it was just a month after the Charlie Hebdo terrorist attack in, in France. And the last time we had had a meeting in this committee, we had given Charlie Hebdo a, um, a, a prize 
for their solidarity with the Danish cartoonists. So we, I was like, we have to have so much more security than we're used to. And the Danish police said, no, we're just going to come as we usually come. And there were, of course, police and stuff like that, but they weren't prepared at all. And um, even, uh, long story short, um, the te- a, the, a terrorist came and, and shut up the place and a, a person was killed who went out to try to stop him and just just a brave man from uh, who had attended um, he was actually a filmmaker he I don't know what he just thought he could go out and even trying to stop him, to him physically or talk to him I don't know what happened outside but he tried physically also to stop him and he got shot and he, he, he was killed. The terrorist got away. Um, and then uh, later that night, he killed a Jewish person at the synagogue in Copenhagen. So he killed two. And then after the attack in the synagogue, he, he, was, uh, he was found by the police and he shot at the police and he was shot and killed. Um, but yeah, and, and the police was not, I mean, I started just running out of the building as soon as I I heard the shots being fired because I was like, I saw the police. They had small guns, and this was, you Mm. know, this was, this was an, you know, um, rifle, an automatic rifle, something like that, a big gun, right? You could hear, (sighs) hear, um, so I was like, you're not prepared. And he actually, the report, the police report says that he actually came in probably came inside of the um the lobby of the place because they found bullets uh, there um from his gun and only one danish police officer shot back the others didn't and the in their in the report it says that if a terrorist comes you should try to not provoke him try to speak to him try to you know calm him down or something like that a guy well, comes I, in with they, an AK-47 yeah. and just like yeah. give him marshmallows and, you know, yeah. <laughs> maybe a cup of coffee. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And and uh, one Danish police and one Swedish police shot back at him. All the others didn't. Um, and I think they're more ready to handle something like that today. The police mm-hmm. are probably. But it's it's just so... Um, I just don't feel safe, right? Because uh, we had also this demonstration against when Salman Rushdie was attacked. We had this demonstration in front of the Iranian mosque that is bought and paid by the Iranian regime mm-hmm. in Copenhagen. We had this demonstration against the mosque. And we were so afraid, all of us. We, it was a small demonstration because people were not, you know, they, they didn't dare to come. And we were all so afraid being there and the police didn't come close to us they just had a distance of maybe 200 uh, meters i don't know in <laughs> in feet i'm but, canadian but, it uh, works for me yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so and and uh, when we were done and also you know fleming rose who is uh, yeah yeah you know him he's also yes. threatened he was he he attended our demonstration and, and gave a beautiful speech and and he was also there, and I'm like, and when we went, we were going back home. The police said, "Why, why did, you, why did you insist that we should come here? You were, you were fine here. You were." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Are you crazy?" People, there, there are people from the mosque standing there, you know, just trying to be intimidating us, taking picture of us, coming close, and driving by cars, you know, with cars. It was so scary to be there. Even the Danes, they were like, my my colleagues were afraid of me coming here. My family was afraid for me. We were all kind of afraid. And we knew that they were probably not going to do anything, but it's still scary. And, you know. Well, the fact that the police were there obviously was a deterrent. So, you know, luckily nothing happened because you were there. Yeah. (laughs) So it makes it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but yeah, sometimes I just don't know <laughs> if the police are have understood. The, yeah, yeah, if what, they're even what, on um, our side. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I mean, that's that's the same question we ask each other when 
so many of us get death threats. Some of them are very credible death threats and we forward them on to our police and they're like, oh, that's too bad. They don't even open an investigation. Yeah. All right. I know it's the same in Denmark. And I I don't even understand because, because I know that other politicians, when I was a politician, I got threat death threats also. But being in, being from Islamists, they didn't really take it, um, you know, seriously. But I knew other politicians who had just weird stalkers, like just weird people following them or just saying something. And the police would go, you know, talk to the stalker and threaten them with legal action and so on. I was like, what? what why is it never happening? Even there was this person from the same mosque, the Islamic uh, regime's mosque here in um, the Iranian uh, mosque in, in Denmark. He, he, we filmed him threatening us and even trying to hit us and also hit, he also hit physically one of, one of the protesters against the mosque many years ago. And I was, um, you know, I was a m- uh, member of the municipality in Copenhagen at that point. We sent it to the police and the police said, it's just an in- internal, you know, something, you know, it's like within your own, uh, I was like, what are you talking about? This is political harassment and violence. What are you talking about? They don't even, they didn't even really understand. They thought, oh, it's just Oh, too, they understood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just two clans within Islam or something. Like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah. It's, just it kill each other sad. off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I've never heard anything like that's probably the most depressing thing I've I've ever heard because you know a lot of my criticism is of the West and of, of their failure to respond in any meaningful way, um, and so I've heard a lot of horror stories, but that's a that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, so it, I've a little uh, bit. I'm I'm depressing you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, this, that's our lives, though, right? Like, it's just this Mm -hmm. constant continuation of feeling so defeated, feeling so demoralized, feeling so depressed, and then just finding the energy again and again and again, to pull yourself up and to keep going even yeah. though you know you're fighting such a huge battle from so many different directions yeah but exactly. um, yeah. obviously things of like what's happening in iran today are one of the motivating factors like it ke- makes you feel yeah, it, energized yeah. to keep fighting um yeah. my organization exactly. free hearts free minds which helps ex-muslims living in muslim majority countries that gives me a lot of energy gives me a lot of pride um in fact we have here one of my therapists jessica has joined us in the audience and uh one of our uh, our past clients who i won't point out is here as well so it's it's you know it's like with this community that we're building and yeah. um it just makes you feel like you're planting seeds, you know, you may not be able to eat the fruit of these trees that grow, but you're involved in, you know, making the world a better place one, one step at a time. Yeah, you are you, you energize me. I mean, if I'm down, I just go on Twitter and watch you, your tweets. (laughs) (laughs) I just love, I just love you on on Twitter. (laughs) Mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I I also, what I tell a, a lot of Danes, who say they're afraid of, you know, just saying what's on their mind and also afraid of physical violence or threats. I say, you know, the more you're afraid, the more, um, the, the bigger bullies they're going to be. I mean, absolutely. this is, you know, just look at the human nature. The small, yeah. Mm-hmm. But also the small time where Islamists were oppressed, you know, like they were killed, jailed, that's the only time in history they were they were afraid of, or they you know i'm not saying they should be oppressed or killed or anything like that that's not what i'm saying but the more afraid we are they smell the fear i mean they know when you're afraid and then they're they're the bigger the bigger the bully they are you know 
Mm-hmm. When Khomeini came to Iran, he didn't even think he would go through with an Isla- you know, Islamizing Iran. But, you know, he saw that he could do it and he could, you know, um, you, he could threaten people, he could kill people, and he did. And, and he got to power and we've been, you know, under that regime for 43 years. So if, if people had stood up to him, even then, maybe we wouldn't have gone through all of this um, for over 40 years. So people have to understand that they have a lot of power and they have, you know, we, we, we shouldn't be afraid. We should know that we have a lot of power and we, we, yeah, we have to, we have to stand up against any totalitarian regime or system and Islam, mainstream Islam, not reformers, but mainstream Islam is a totalitarian ideology. It's Sharia law, it's, you know, it's ideology. And that's why I don't use the term Islamism because I think it's a weird <laughs> term mm-hmm. because Islamism is really just mainstream Islamic theology. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, and it's, it's uh, or political Islam. Islam is political for m- most, most of the time political of course there are reformers and we should point that out always but those are the people that's are, not the religion yeah. yeah like i'll say yeah. islamists but i won't say islamism because yeah. there's no such religion it doesn't yeah, exist exactly. there's no such thing yeah. as islamism islamism doesn't have a book it doesn't have a prophet it's not a thing yeah. islam yeah. is the thing that's the thing yeah, that yeah. we're referring to yeah. here yeah exactly yeah. i have the same uh, in the book also try to say no, there's not. Um, Islamism is it's just used or political Islam. It's it's nice to. Say, I mean, of course, I I respect all Muslims. Uh, they have their same rights as me here in the West, and of course, there's not no that there's no discussing that. But the the religion <laughs> we have to talk about. We have to yeah. criticize, and I I want Muslims to uh, you know I, that's what we want, right? This is a yeah. Muslim thing. We want Muslims to go to, you know, to, you know, you have to be a part of this debate. Uh, You cannot just, if you're calling yourself a Muslim, please understand what your religion is. And if it's not what you want the religion to be, either leave or change it. That's, you know, that's what you have to do. If you're a Democrat or if you're, you know, a normal human being with, with dignity and you want to live a free life as secular democratic um, in, in a secular democra- democratic country you, for, for the Muslims in the West you have to either leave your religion or reform it yeah. and there is no way around it yeah and it, it would be nice if they would be able to do either of those things without having the support of people who are supposedly progressive minded, liberal minded, open minded people who believe in supposedly believe in things like feminism and democracy and liberty, it would it's really difficult to do our job or to to try and progress our communities, our cultures, our religions without these people standing in our way. Like I expect the Islamists, I expect the extremists, I expect the fundamentalists. I know that they're going to be, you know, regurgitating the whatever it is that they, the narrative that they have been fed. I, I know all about that indoctrination because I was indoctrinated. I already know what's going to come out of their mouth. I've heard it a million times before because I've said it a million times before that's expected, but it's really unexpected and harsh betrayal that we also have to fight the, you know, the other side as well. Yeah. Uh. So and even I have with yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, with even with Iranians, some of them they say, Oh, I'm not a Muslim myself, but you shouldn't say this is Islam. Yeah. But how can I even start this discussion with you? You're not even you're not even ready. Do you know anything about Islam? Should we where where should we start this discussion? Right? Yeah. You're not even you're not even a Muslim. You I'm not even... a Nazi, but let, let's not talk about it. <laughs> I'm yeah. not a communist, but I don't want to talk about it. Don't say anything yeah. bad about them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. We should, we, we only, it's like every ideology is open to criticism and discussion and people can say, I agree, I disagree. 
except yeah. for Islam. That's the one where it's like, oh no, let's not talk about this. I don't wanna, I don't yeah. wanna do that. No. Yeah. Except for us. That's all we do. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. yeah, Islam on the brain. <laughs> yes. Somebody in the chat was calling us the Haram Club. <laughs> so yeah. that's awesome. We should all be taking shots. That was you, Sahara. I should have known. <laughs> Sahara, of no course. no to Momo. <laughs> that's her that's her slogan. No no to Momo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everybody who is here today probably has uh, comments for you, questions, uh, discussion points. So if you're here, if you want to say something to Jayla, then please um, just unmute yourself. Or if somebody else is talking, then just click on the little one of the icons on the bottom there with like raising your hand or something like that. Um, and then I'll know to call on you. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. Um, the last one that I can see is from Jasmine, where she's saying, I wish more Muslim and hijabi women would speak up in the West. What do you say to that, Jayla? I mean, it's very difficult to have a, even a conversation with hijabis about hijab, even, even you know, why, why you know, why are you wearing that hijab? And they will say, oh, if they're honest, we had this discussion one time and then this hijabi says, it's because my sexuality is a private thing. So you're saying- As opposed to the rest of you whores. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're saying my sexuality is a public thing? So I'm up for grabs? <laughs> what are you saying? Um, you know, they're if you're ready, but they, of course, they cannot say that because that's so <laughs> outrageous. So, so they just say things like, "Oh, it's my choice, my body, my choice," and a lot of things they buy that. Like they, oh yeah, of course we have the right to take off clothes. And we should have the right to put on clothes. Hmm. Uh, they don't get but, it. They don't understand the context. <laughs> that's why. But 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 if it was a Christian, let's say it was Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, doing that, you would be against it. It's because mm -hmm. it's a it's a minority that looks different than you uh, physically. They and actually a lot of Danes they like the fact that Muslims are different. They're drawn to the bearded Islamists and the hijabi women because they it's just so interesting exotic. It's, mm. it's exotic and different it's so you know they're just like oh i'm living in in aladdin or something you know they're trying mm -hmm. to they, it it's the same i mean i i don't understand that you have to have a critical uh point of view when it you know i i like different cultures but i don't like the misogyny in in you know, in African cultures, I don't like it in Islamic culture. I don't like it um, in in Western culture. Whenever it shows its, you know, disgusting head. <laughs> so you have to be against misogyny, no matter if it's Islam or anything else. And when it comes to the fact that it, I had this Danish woman once said, "I I do agree with you, but I I feel like you can't criticizing Islam would be like criticizing somebody's mother." You, you don't criticize other people's relatives or family. It's like, it's none of my business. Like it's their business. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting comment that I hear all the time, which I find to be like embarrassed for the person who just said that, you know? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm embarrassed for you that you are such a horrible human being and that you don't even recognize the, the thing that you just said is so disgusting. You know, like imagine yeah. if I said I'm straight, so I don't care what happens to gay people. You yeah. know, imagine yeah. if the apartheid in South Africa, if all the white people said, well, I'm white, I don't care. Yeah. You know, that that yeah. attitude of like, uh, that's none of my business. I'm not going to get involved. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it has nothing to do with me. First of all, the powerless need those with power to support them. Other uh, powerless people can't help themselves. They need those with power to care. So if you have power and you're choosing not to care, you know, yeah. that's pretty sad. 
Um, yeah, and and secondly, uh, oh, I, I lost I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, I think I think I actually after the terrorist attack, I heard people not directly saying it to me, but people would have their relatives or friends say to them, "Oh, it's good that the terrorists just didn't attack normal people." It, it was that was my second yeah. point. That yeah. was my second normal people. It, they uh, attack these fucked up people. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, when you're that, if you're that kind of person, you're not going to see the difference between Shia, Sunni, Muslim, ex-Muslim, Arab, yeah. Iranian. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All of you can just go over there and get killed with the terrorists yeah. together. Um, yeah. But but my second point was that that fallacy that they think, oh, it's just going to stay in their community. It's their business yeah. over there. It's not going to affect yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. No, Habibi, you yeah. leave that there. Yeah. You leave that garbage to fester. It's yeah, going to grow yeah. and it's going to yeah. spread and eventually yeah. it comes to your backyard. And now what we have happening yeah. in Dearborn, Michigan, which is the same thing we have happen in London, England, when teachers are trying to teach inclusion and diversity in the schools and they start, it was a story about two penguins who adopted another penguin, but, but then the two penguins were male, you know what I mean? The Muslims lost their mind in Dearborn, Michigan, talking about being gay is not okay. Okay. And that's the same thing that happened in, in London, England. The parents yeah. were trying to put up rainbows and butterflies and stickers. And you had the Muslim parents coming with eggs and tomatoes, throwing them at these parents. Yeah. It's so now amazing. this I mean, is what you've created. You said, oh, it's just their community. Just yeah, let them do that to their yeah. daughters. It doesn't matter to me. It's none of my business. Now it's your business. Yeah. A lot of people, in even in the Danish political system, they say to me, you know what? We cannot really, we cannot really blend at this time because, you know, we don't want the problems in our schools, in our neighborhoods. We cannot, you know, get rid of the ghettos. Uh, because if we do that then you have to have them in our schools and in our go. neighborhoods there it is. and we yeah. are not ready so for some years we have to just live with the fact that we have a parallel system but i'm saying but we've had that and this is why we, we are having all these problems mm. and the longer time these ghettos are you know living a parallel life in in denmark or in any other western uh, you know country the Islamists are the ones who who get, you know, that that's their audience. That's their yes, they people. control They're, those areas. Yeah, in the UK, have they had these vests that said yeah. Sharia police, and they would go around yeah. and stop people from drinking alcohol, mm -hmm. and even telling the women to go wear some different clothes yeah. if their skirt was yeah. too short. Yeah, yeah, that's what you. you may, it's the same in Denmark. You have Sharia councils. It's not official. It's of course secret. But they are. We have had, you know, documentaries proving that these exist, um, and it's not even illegal, really, in Denmark because it's just it's because it's not official. It's just yeah. something they're playing, but it's yeah. still you know they're telling people not to get divorced. They can't, you know, that they're telling women you cannot get divorced. You cannot have your children. Um, you know, if you get divorced. Um, you know, deciding for these women in these communities, and there are no even there is no like le legislation to go after these moms, yeah. not yet anyway, because it's just something they're playing. At one yeah. point, a Danish girl was converted to Islam. She was only fifteen, and her her Quran teacher in a private Muslim school in Denmark married her. She was he was twenty four. He she was fifteen. The municipality, the police, everyone was involved. Nobody could do anything about it because they were just saying they were married because it wasn't real. Yeah, uh, Islamic marriage. Yeah. 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 I, that's all over the Western world playing mm -hmm. those games. Um, but anyway, they just, I don't know. I don't know after 9 11 how they can have that attitude of thinking it's none of our business. It's not going to, it's just let them deal with it in their yeah. own communities. It always, uh, it's going to always come back to them. Uh, Nirvan, I'm sorry I left you there waiting for so long. Well, first of all, I just can't stress enough how much of 
all I am in with with regards to you uh, the I am and uh, women like Jayla. I literally stopped complaining about my life after your podcast with Sam Harris. <laughs> And I'm just glad to see you live. You know, it's like God does exist. My, <laughs> my question actually is that, is it really possible to reform Islam? Or do you think people like Majid Nawaz are just trying to square a circle here? Because it's, it's literally the word of God and you can't really alter it. So h- how do you reform Islam? Like, um, that was my question, honestly. That's for you, Jayla. Is it for me? Okay, I think I think for instance, if the regime in Iran falls tomorrow, I think a lot of people who are now Muslims or call them Muslim call, call themselves Muslims will say, "I'm I'm an ex-Muslim." Uh, they will maybe convert to other religions as uh, you know, Zarathustra, Zoroastrianism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know how they didn't. That's your original uh, religion in yeah, Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Yeah. yeah. Some will go to that religion, some will go to Christianity, um, and some will become ex-Muslims, atheists. I think also some, um, you know, minorities within uh, Iran, the Muslims, the Shias, uh, or the Sunnis, they will probably uh, also try to reform it in some way or another because they have such, a, even if they're not religious, in the same way that you know Islamists are religious, sometimes also in within Denmark you see a group of Muslims being married to the idea that they're Muslims because yeah. they have an identity. It's not even a religious thing. It's just I'm proud to be a Muslim because sometimes even just because people are afraid of us, you know, a lot of youngsters young boys they're like mm. yeah we're gangster people are afraid of us i'm a muslim you know it, it's an you know it's, it's ridiculous but it's that you know, their masculine masculinity is their identity and um and I, I think we will have islam lingering even though you know islam is you know become even if we like we re- even if muslims themselves reject Islamists as they're doing in Iran because most of the Iranian people are Muslim still um, and they're rejecting Islamists they're reject, rejecting you know mainstream Islam but they haven't really told us or themselves even what what what's the what's the next move is you know mm-hmm. regarding religion what 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 are your feelings about religion and when I meet people who come from Iran some of them are, you know, some of them come here and, you know, they're married to someone or they just came as refugees and they're maybe praying or a little bit religious, trying to keep on to an identity of being a Muslim. And then after some years, they leave Islam. And I ask them, why? What, how, what happened? And they say, you know, we're living in Iran, you can't really question Islam. You can't really even dare to. I, I heard you say that as well, Jasmine. Just writing your your journal what your thoughts are about this religion or even you don't even dare to think critically about Islam um, but when you leave it or, or, or the power of Islam the you know the threat and the violence is gone then you have you know the freedom to think about it and yeah. and then you can't support you know uh, the religion anymore and that that is a process I think Muslims have to go through uh, and someone wants to reform it because they have an identity you know if they're married if they're married to the identity or if they're you know if it's very important for them if they find peace um if they find something spiritual in in islam that they want to keep but what i ask of all the reformers is please give us some some theology theologic alternative because you cannot just say Oh, I just don't believe in the political part because that's just going to. Even if you don't, if you believe that yourself, it's going to die with you because it's not, you know, it's not a school of thought. Mm. Uh, it's not. Um, it's not a religious school. It's not a mosque. It's not a website. <laughs> you you have to you have to organize it for it to stay alive because, yeah. or else 
you know, the other <laughs> the other side of Islam, the mainstream Islam, they have the theology written out in so many books, in so many mosques, in so many schools and websites, and you know. And in fact, the reason them. why children are encouraged to memorize the Quran all the time is exactly for this reason to keep it alive. So just in case yeah. somebody burns all the books and brings down all the websites or something like that, it's like, no, this mm -hmm. is why we need to make sure our children memorize it to keep it yeah. secure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so Nirvan, does that answer your question? Are you, it's, it, it, a, it, it, it's a difficult it, it, question. It, yeah, because it's like, you know, I think I, 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 I mean, I wish we could abolish it and not only Islam, I'm, I'm, I was born Hindu and I'm not a fan of 10 heads and 10 hands, neither of it. And it gets conflated with bigotry when you when you say you don't like Islam versus Muslims, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like these people have taken George Orwell way too seriously, you know. Yes. So well said. You know, I mean, that that's all. And like I said, I'm just, just glad to see you guys and I'll be a part as long as you're uh, every time uh, there is a podcast or a, a conversation like this, I am a little mean. The next time you talk to Sam Harris, can you please let him know that he's the one who changed my life? Oh, I'll, you know, I tell, I, I can't tell you how many people have asked me to give him that message. Because it seems <laughs> like every other day I'm, I'm, I'm texting I, I, him. Another I love one, you. Sam. I mean, I, trust me. I mean, I, I sent you, a, I sent you a message yeah. and you replied, and that is something I'm going to cherish. You know. <laughs> you actually wrote back to me. It was like, you know, kid in a candy store. But Aww. yeah, I won't take much of your time. Uh, you take care of yourself, sister. Lots That's of love. Great. And somebody else might be having a question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nirvan. Um, Halima, did you have your hand up or? Yes, yes. Okay. Do you, do you, uh, do you hear me well? Yes, yes. Okay, so I don't have a question. I just wanted to make a comment if that's possible. Um, so, you know, when you speak about um, education and stuff, I'm actually a teacher and I, when I deal with, I live in France, so when I deal with um, students, I have a lot of students who come from uh, like North American, uh, sorry, North Africa and they are Muslims basically and their parents are Muslims and some of them can be really extreme, extremist. So, uh, I tried, for example, they asked me, uh, oh, so you're Moroccan, because I come from Morocco, and they go like, uh, you're Muslim, right? And I go like, no, <laughs> and, that, and they surprised them like so much, they go like, how come you're Moroccan, you're supposed to be Muslim? And I'm like, no, I'm not. So I just give them this idea, but I don't go too much into the details mm. for them to be able to see that there, you know, some cases that exist. And that alone would maybe make them think, you know, when they go home and show, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that was my point. And the other point about the hijab, uh, me personally, I I was actually forced to wear the hijab for like eight years. And um, it was really hard with like the family stuff and everything. But um, fortunately, I was able to stand on my feet um, and I actually lost a lot of uh, family members and friends. You know, I think you're all familiar with the, the mess that comes with leaving Islam. And the problem is that they don't even know I actually left Islam. They only know that I removed the, the hijab and that was like an enough mess for them to just go like, oh, she's out of the group. She's the state. And so, yeah. And uh, I just, I, I would just like to say that I'm very happy that there are people who speak out about uh, this because if, if like, um, I was watching a girl who's actually an activist about ex-Muslims and stuff, and she was like, you don't know, you might be helping, helping someone who's like in a small village listening to you with a bad connection, and that changes their life. So I feel like it doesn't matter if you have like one of you or like two or whatever, the most important thing is for you to speak up. And uh, that's pretty much it. And just one little thing. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know how I can reach you yet. Me. Like, is it possible for me to speak to you later, like just for five minutes or something? Yeah, absolutely. If you go to my website, yasmuhammad.com, you can click on contact. Yeah, because I did this and there was a problem and I couldn't like keep up with the discussion. So that's why I don't know how to... Uh, uh, okay, well, um, the same website that you went to to sign up for this, 
Yeah. If you just, instead of clicking on the forgotten feminist tab, click on the contact tab and then yeah. uh, I'll get your message. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Hanima. That was actually, I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to let Jayla respond, but I, I just want to say that I think that was really beautiful. What you said, um, planting seeds is incredibly important and yeah, the, the, you know, speaking up and being honest and being not just pretending that you're Muslim because you don't want to deal with the backlash that, or any issues that might happen with the kids or whatever, but telling them that you're not Muslim, like that, that takes a lot of courage. And I'm, mm. yeah, that was, that's great. I'm glad. Sorry, Jayla I jumped in. I got so excited. <laughs> yeah, no, I think she, I think it's so, uh, it was such a nice um, comment and, and uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea when children ask, even in my own uh, children, I don't try to tell them what to think or about my criticism of Islam. If they ask questions, I tell them the answer of what I think is, you know, the, the right answer. And I ask them to think for themselves, right? Um, sometimes I even don't, you know, I try to, because it's the reality of what's going on, for instance, in Iran is so brutal. So I just don't want that inside of my 11 year old. So yeah. I just try to, you know, have. I don't want her to come to the demonstrations. I don't want her to see, see the, the videos from Iran. It's so brutal. So I keep that away from my children. And of course, when being a school teacher, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do what the Islamists do, is to brainwash people. So yeah. of course, it's good to just answer their questions. Are you a Muslim? And you say no. And then if they have more questions, they can ask you, then they know, you know, you're maybe different and they will, you know, have some questions for you later in, in the school year. Uh, and the, I, I was a teacher at one uh, time in, in, and had a lot of Muslim and they would ask me, are you Muslim? I would say no. And they were like, oh, like, I, and I, at that time, I didn't even understand why are you afraid of that? I mean, but I mean, the, the fear, even though I don't think there. I don't think it knew theologically why they should be afraid, but they, there was just this fear surrounding the fact that I wasn't a Muslim. They were just afraid of the fact that I wasn't a Muslim. And uh, yeah, but that fear is so real within Muslim communities. Uh, so there, yeah. So good for you to, to, to be, to, for being honest with them and, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a teacher, your job is to teach kids how to think, not what to think. So you're doing a great job, Hanima. I saw a couple of hands pop up and then they went away. And I, I think one of them was Sahara. Yes, I did have my hand. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to the club, uh, you know, Haram Club and the Infidels. <laughs> I wish family. this was vodka. Um, Jayla, thank you. Respect, respect and love to you and power to you. Okay. And uh, congratulations first for, you know, we're able to leave and survive, you know, escape from Iran and live in, in um, I mean, kind of a free, but nowadays we, we are being silent, even the West, right? Um, so respect and, and congratulations and what's happening in Iran is it really is it hits close home um, because yeah. I came from that world I came I grew up in Kenya and I grew up uh, culture and religion that one way of thinking and if you think outside the box you were either you know uh, tortured or sometimes disappear unfortunately um, so it's important for us here in the west you know I live in the United States I'm grateful to be here and many of us are fortunate to be here, even though, yes, this is scary to speak out. And, you know, these, especially these bullies, right? They want to bully us, they want to silence us, but we are not going to be silent, you know, no more silent and we need to speak. And, and we need to call out these, uh, you know, these people who are, you know, uh, doing horrible things to their girls or uh, children, especially I speak about uh, female genital mutilation where they mutilate little children. And that is happening also in the West, in America. And they get away with it because uh, the Western, we have a problem. Those people who are supposed to protect the children uh, in this country, I mean, the whole world should be protecting these small children, but especially West, you know, where 
children supposed to be protected. Uh, these people are getting away and they are doing behind the scene because they follow Islam. These people are Muslims and it's just the privilege, you know, why is it when it comes to Islam, these, um, these people, especially the, the mainstream media, they just go in their corner, you know, like they don't want to be called Islamophobe and racist, it, which is just ridiculous. Islam is not a race. Islam is an idea, a set ideas, and, and, and we should not be scared and we should be able to criticize the way we would criticize Christianity, Buddha, or any other religion. So I am just so proud of so many of you, especially what's happening in Iran. It's just, it really gives us power here. We need to speak more. More of us have to come out and say, I left Islam. And it's so garbage getting killed people because they left Islam or removed their hijab. That is a garbage. And I'm not gonna respect your ideology. And you need to get over it because in the West, you, your ideology is gonna be called out and your barbaric practice is gonna be called out and you need to get over it and you're not gonna kill people. So I think we just need to be courageous and we just need to really be clear message. I, I really don't care who gets offended. I have spaces, uh, we created um, a Twitter space where so at least we can spread these you know, awareness uh, conversation because so many ex-Muslims are in the closet because they're afraid to come out even in the West. Why is it this ideology is so untouchable this ideology that takes your humanity, your whole life, your lifehood. Yeah, and, and I'm just like so disappointed with the West that it, it just gets away with everything it wants, you know? There literally, I don't believe privilege, but there is a privilege, Muslim privilege here is going on that if you're a Muslim and you know, you are kind of like, you know, using the Islamophobia card and all that nonsense, you can get away with everything you know, the anti-Semitic, um, you can say those things. But if it comes from us, like, you know, criticizing Islam and calling our little children being mutilated, that we are being Islamophobic, that's a BS. And, and just give me a break. I don't care what you call me, call me racist, call me Islamophobe, call me Sharmuta, you know, like whatever, whore, <laughs> everything you want it. I'm not gonna be silent. I'm gonna speak out. And I think you more of us have to come forward and respect it to many of you. And I get it, you have to be safe. Uh, safety comes first. But in the West, we have obligation. It's our duty to come out and just say like, you know what, I don't practice this religion and I don't wear the hijab and it should be okay and people should not be killed. Sorry, I kind of ranted, but I just wanted to say thank you. And um, I, I hear you what's happening in the West and especially the mainstream media. But I say what I do because I'm not going to be put it in a box because I ran away from that box and I'm not going to go mm. again. So thank you, Jayla. So respect and love to you. Thank, and thank you, you so much. everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Sahara. Um, I see Deborah has been trying to raise her hand. So, oh, there you are, Deb. <laughs> uh, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, sorry, I, I'm like typing away over here like an idiot. <laughs> no, I, it, it worked, I saw it. Yeah, it's this perfect. is so cool, Sahara. I am on freaking fire, girl. <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. And Jayla, thank you so much for sharing and uh, yeah. being so brave. Um, excuse me, I've got horrible allergies and <clears throat> right when I talk, of course, I'm going to sneeze. But, um, whew, okay. Okay. Um, I, I have like a, a personal investment in this topic of, of um, hijab and Islam and, um, ooh, so God, I'm so sorry. And the oppressive nature of it for, for my, from my perspective, it doesn't matter what religion you are because the oppression is, especially towards women and children is so inherent and deeply rooted in religions. Uh, I mean, the three major religions for sure. Um, and also, you know, I, I escaped a cult when I was a kid. Um, my son is Muslim and very, very deeply into his, his Islamic beliefs. My daughter or, or uh, daughter-in-law and granddaughter are fully covered when they go out in public. 
gloves. Um, so it's, I have a vested interest in being a part of this conversation and advocating for, oh, I'm so sorry. Advocating That's okay, Deb, um, because you right, are you're gonna you're gonna come I'm on gonna Forgotten sneeze. Feminists, and we're gonna hear it. T take your time. <laughs> I'm gonna see you. I'm so sorry. Um, I like doubled up my medication too before this, but um, I, I and also having been around um, Muslims a majority of my life and being seeing the indoctrination, seeing the fear, the terror that is inflicted into especially women and, and men too. I mean, we don't see very many men standing up and saying, this is bullshit. We're going to let our women have some freedom. We need more mm. of that. We need more men to say enough is enough and quit hiding behind our skirts as we speak out or as you, as you, as women such as you speak out and say, we're not going to stand this anymore. Um, I know that sounds pretty harsh, but it needs to be said. We need all people to speak up and to say, this is, this is wrong and this is oppressive. And for me as an ex-Christian and being, being in a very oppressive religious environment most of my childhood, for me to say Christianity is bullshit, I feel that safety. But even being exposed to Islam and, and knowing the way that, that that works, saying Islam is bullshit is terrifying even to me. So kudos and bravo for women who are standing up and saying no more. And, and especially the women in Iran who are throwing off their hijab, yeah. wearing their hijab. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm, I'm on a yeah. rant, but yeah. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, and you know what, when you, when, one, one thing I think is being overlooked these days is also that the Iranian young men on the streets are fighting, you know, for women's freedoms. And it's maybe yeah. the first time in history so many women, yeah. men are invested in risking their lives for freedom for women, right? It's, that's mm -hmm. how it started of course it's against the regime and the, the totality of the regime but but it started with women's right to to have uh, you know the right to go out the house mm -hmm. wearing what they want to wear and and it's i mean the men supported this fight from the start and i'm so proud of proud of of, um, of the men uh, of the iranian men uh, because when when the regime uh, came to power they wanted to um, um you know they the first thing they the islamic uh, the first islamic thing they did was to you know demand that w women should be covered mm -hmm. and the women went to the streets there are so many pictures of the big demonstration in tehran when where you know hundreds thousands of women went went to this demonstration and didn't, there was no men there Mm. The men didn't really support the women at that time. Um, and my, my father, he said to me, uh, you know, at that time, we really didn't even see that the women were like, you know, they were oppressed in Islam. We, did, we didn't even yeah. think about it. We didn't understand it. Um, he said a, a woman came and gave us money to, my, to his former party, political party, and said, you have to do something for the women. And he said, of course, I took the money, but I didn't even understand what she was talking about because we didn't think about the Even the opposition, the men in the opposition, like the exile uh, opposition, some of them, they still don't understand it because they're used to thinking about ethnic groups who are being oppressed or they have other, um, you know, um agendas and they don't think about because if you're not a woman then you just don't really think about the fact that women are not even being treated as humans and and the opposition you know they it is male dominated even in exile right so it the the women revolution in iran is actually it's surprising the opposition they really don't understand masi is like She's, she's like this hero that came from nowhere and she's like, everybody wants her to be the leader. I mean, all of the opposition outside of Iran, they're like, we didn't even see this fight coming. And, and you know, now it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a women's revolution against the Islamic, Islamic Republic. And, and it's just, 
also, actually, I see this also in the West sometimes that the men really don't have that big of a problem mm -hmm. with with Islamic ideas because it's mm -hmm. it's male dominated. It's mm -hmm. very masculine. It's you know, and in in a place where masculinity is really cursed in 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 today's world with the woke uh, ideology and so on, some men kind of defend the you know ideas of Islam and say, oh, we don't want this porno culture, uh, you know, some conservatives even. And I'm like, no, 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 you're totally wrong. You know, Andrew Tate, you, you probably, uh, if, you know, you know Andrew Tate, right? Um, just mean, no? The Andrew Tate. He, oh, he yes. Decided, yeah. He, he mm -hmm. went out and said, I like Islam. Islam is the only uh, religion who stands up mm. for men and right, you know, and some Islam is quite a few people him. on conservative Americans have said similar things. Yeah, and yeah. and they want they want to yeah. ban uh, transvestites yeah. or uh, not transvestites but trans people who, you know, all of the queer, uh, you know, mm -hmm. movement that where people mm -hmm. dress different or act different and it's like because it's the same to... thing yeah <laughs> it's a yeah. right-wing religious conservative yeah. traditional fundamentalist yeah. extremist ideology it makes sense yeah. that they're gonna like each other that's not a surprise to me yeah <laughs> but it's a surprise I mean, to everybody else who thinks that muslims are that, that islam is on the left somehow you know yeah. that, that they've created that confusion but yeah yeah but it's, I mean, we have to, you know, both on the west, uh, on the left and the right, we have problems with people, you know, making excuses for Islam instead of, you know, seeing that, oh, this is a threat to our civilization, really, because the ideas are so bad, you can, you can't even make it up, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we have really gone over time today, but we had so many people here that really wanted to speak with you, Jayla. So um, just want to wrap it up and want to make sure that everybody who had something to say had a chance to say it. I know there's been a lot of comments and um, unfortunately I, I haven't no been able to read them all. Yes, girl. Can I say, okay. Can I say my <laughs> login kind of like I say, you know, so the space I was talking, Twitter space, we have Ali and I, you know, um, for silent voices in Islam. And we have, you know, people coming and calling us nonsense and, you know, and, and we go, no, no to Momo, no, no to Owo, no, no to Bobo, no to Toto, Toto is Truro. So all these people who wants to control, you know, people at them all, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, F them all. Uh, and <laughs> so it literally, it's just no, 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 no to these people. And when these, I'm talking about uh, cancel culture, when they said, oh, but we don't want to talk about Islam because we don't want to offend these people. Well, let them cry. You want people like, you know, you want to defend these people mutilating their children and doing child marriage and horrible things and forcing little children to wear the hijab. You, you want to defend that culture, something is wrong with you, no, no to all that crap, and we're going to speak, so continue speaking, guys, and thank you so much, no, no to Momo, no, no to hijab, and free from hijab, forever and ever, yeah. thank you, thank you, Love and thank peace. you, sir, thank you, thank you, now we've got hands going up, Nirvan and Dr. Devran, but we've, we've, oh my gosh, and Leora, come on, you guys, are we going to sit here for the rest of the day? <laughs> No, no, not not at all. But just I just wanted to say, you know, I had to I had to really quote Hitchens here. You know, when someone says I'm offended, they say like it's as if it's a perfect constitutes a perfect argument, which is stupid. And I I really don't understand what offense means here. You know, when you're trying to challenge an ideology. So yeah, again to quote Hitchens, if you give Prophet Muhammad an enema, you could bury him in a matchbox. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nirvan. Leora, did you want to ask uh, Jayla a question? Hi, I didn't want to ask a question. I just wanted to thank you, Jayla, so much for sharing your story. Thank you. And thank you thank for you. Uh, all the work that you do to speak up and help those who need to be uh, heard. 
And that's that's Thank all you. I want today. And I, talk, I wanted to speak about the, just a point when people say that all religions are op oppressors and you get oppressed in all religions, but in Islam, it's it's deeper and it's more. So for me, who was raised a Muslim, I always look at it as as Islam is a different religion than anyone else. I wasn't able to even open a bank account. I wasn't able to to go to university without the permission of of my father or do anything without the permission of my father. Women until this day, they can't um, even sign a paper to help her, her child in a hospital to go through an operation. The father has to come and sign the documents for the child. I wasn't able to do anything. And until this day, it's happening. I see other Christian uh, women say, I'm leaving the, the religion and maybe they will be disowned for a year or two and then their families will come back and speak to them with us we're disowned for the rest of our lives we we lose our family we lose our community so it's to me it's just not the same and uh, that's it i would like to thank you again and uh, no no to momo as sahara said <laughs> thank you <laughs> i love that i love that and i just want to say i feel like your family members all of you because uh, <laughs> it's just it's just a fight that the it's it's a minority within a minority that has you know we are we are we are so many across the world but we are so few at the same time and yeah. i just feel like you're all my family members <laughs> <laughs> and and also of course there is this big thing that we lose a lot of people also family I've lost family not lost them but you know who have have you know taken a distance um, from you because even even friends I don't have really that many Muslim friends in my life anymore because they're just afraid of you even if they're not you know against what you're for they're just afraid uh, for and of you um so if if you speak up against the religion and and therefore i i'm just so happy my heart is filled with the with love for all of you who who i meet here and on social media i yeah thank you for speaking up all of you thank you oh, that's so lovely jaylad and our hearts are filled with love for you and thank you for speaking up I really appreciate you sharing your story and, you know, engaging us all in conversation. There's still hands going up, but I'm sorry, I have to go. You guys, it was supposed to be an hour and it's been two, but um, hopefully Jayla will be willing to come back again for a part two. Of course. Um, of course. And of course you can follow her on Twitter as well. And on Facebook, that's correct. And I think even yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, I have been, yeah, I've made a profile. I'm not using it that much. I okay. Just, yeah, well, I'll add links to your Facebook. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. I'll add links to your Facebook and to your Twitter to this, yeah. Uh, yeah. to this um, conversation and uh, people can follow you there and keep it going. Cause you're right. This is the Thank new you. family. We've created this new family. We've created this new community of like-minded people. And our family isn't based on, you know, what part of the world you're born in or what religion you were assigned at birth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? It's a family that it's a chosen family and there's nothing better than that. So let's uh, yeah. definitely all keep in touch now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much, so much Jayla. for having me. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.